right. All right, so uh, in order to get past all of these little problems I'm having, we're going to switch and not use playgrounds anymore. They've just been the bane of my existence. So we're going to create a new project, a new, so file new project. We're going to create an OSX application as a command line tool. All right, so it's going to be an OSX app command line tool. And you can give it a name, whatever. I'm going to call it lecture winter 2016. And the identifier, this is, we'll, we'll use this when we do your iPhone app as well as on the Android side. Uh, the way they like to identify you is by what they call a reverse URL. And so it goes like whatever your company website is typically. So mine is like com.lockersoft and then dot the product name. So I'm going to call it lecture 2016. Which type of project did you choose? And then a desktop, a command line app. Okay. All right, and the language we want is Swift. Okay, so you can you can put whatever you want as your organization identifier. It's not doesn't really matter until you try to deploy it to the web store, to the Apple store. All right, and then it asks you where do you want it. <coughs> I'm gonna put mine in my Dropbox so I can have it for future generations. All right, so it creates this file. Let me move this one out of the way. Did you say you created a new folder? I didn't create a new folder. I just created a new project, a whole new project. And so now on the disk, it looks like this. Um, it creates a folder for you. Can I say that? Yeah, if you want to. So it, it creates this structure on the disk, and this is the thing we're going to, to open in the future, this Xcode project. So this is what it looks like when it's open. It gives you a little file structure here and a main.swift, which has the standard hello world. So we can run that now. This, this does not run automatically, so we have to run and compile every time we want to run it, but it will still solve us some problems. So I'm going to click the, the go button up here and it's going to run it. And it shows in the output window down here, hello world. Ta-da! All right, so we have it working. Now, we can do the things that I tried to do yesterday. We could do things like uh, um, read a line from the keyboard and strip off the end, and then let's print the value that the guy types in. All right, so this will, this is like a gets in Ruby, and then this will print it back out to the screen, to the console. So it's sitting here waiting for me to type something. So I can say, hi, Dave. And it prints out the value temp and the string, right? So it was able to read that. What, what does this optional mean here? Why did it print optional, hi, Dave? Do you remember what an optional value was? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> so a uh, read line returns an optional string. An optional string means it can hold either a string or a nil. 
whereas a, a normal string can only hold a string. It can't have a nil in it, which is a weird concept as far as I'm concerned. But uh, so an optional, if I really want this to not be optional, I have to convert this, whatever this returns, into a, an actual value. So I'm gonna, I can do that by using the exclamation point and that will convert that string into a normal string value. So now if I run it, um, it should let me type something and now it's no longer optional, it's a, it's a true string. The reason they have that is that if this guy doesn't type anything, um, temp could, could be a nil here, theoretically. It's not possible in this case, but um, and if you if you had on a screen like a, a text box entry, and they click a button before typing anything in the text box, that value is going to be nil. So you have to be able to take care of those error conditions, and that's why they have this. Um, it's it's a strange concept as far as I'm concerned. I would just do my if statements if it's nil. Do something. <laughs> I mean, it just makes sense to me. But. All right, so we can we can read stuff. If I don't strip this off, uh, what do you think I get in my string? Uh, I get a, my character turn, right? So I get hello world. I get the text plus this character turn at the end. That's all that is. So that's like a gets dot chomp versus not a chomp. So typically, we almost always want to get rid of that anyway because it messes up our our data. All right. Any questions on that now? Uh, probably. Uh, Command R, which is the little clover leaf. All right. So we're happy. So what I did yesterday was or tried to show yesterday was to create a function that would return an integer for me. So, so let's write that because uh, I thought that would be useful. So we create a function, I'm going to call it get int, and it's going to return a value of what do you think? An int. Yay! Uh, and so we can do this same thing, this let my temp equals a um, Oops. I'm using PC keyboard and I can't remember which one is the command. All right, so I get a value. I'm going to read it from the keyboard. Um, and then, depending on what I have, I'm going to uh, return the integer or a zero. So I want it to return a zero if, if nothing was there. So this, is, this would match more like a gets like I, I normally have on my, uh, on my Ruby site. So I'm, I need a return value. I'm going to call it return int. And I'm going to set it to zero to start with. And then I'm going to say if my value temp is not equal to nil, then I'm going to convert the value, the temp value, uh, into an integer. All right, so um, let's see what it doesn't like this. Value type of string can never be what? Can never be nil. Can never be nil. Comparison isn't allowed. Ah, because I did this in my old code. Um, <clears throat> but now that I look at it, it seems like it would be better to uh, to let it convert it as an as a non-optional because in order for the program to continue, they have to hit an enter key. So I'm going to get something back, no matter what. All right. So so I don't I then don't really need to convert it or check to see if it's a nil because this is always going to have something in it. But when I convert it to an integer, this is, this is going to be a problem. So
So let's do uh, this is this doesn't like it because an integer this conversion type here is going to return an optional and what does an optional have in it? It's either going to have a value or a nil. So in an int case, it's going to have an integer or it's going to be nil. I'm really not a fan of these optionals, let me tell you. So I need to convert that and force it into be a value. So um, I can force it this way, and then I can say return my, my return int, which is a lot of extra code here, which we can refactor. So let's see if that works. Um, now, instead of that, let's do a uh, that means it's an, there's an error here. And it's a temporary error because I'm still typing. But it says use of unresolved identifier temp because I've commented this out. Temp is no longer valid. So it tells me all the time as I'm typing all the errors, but it's really not valid until I'm done typing my code here. So I want to do a get int and then print my int. Let's see what that does. So I'm going to type uh, 42, and I get a 42 back. So my integer is 42. If I run it as uh, something else, let's do this and see if it actually crashes. Yes. So this is uh, this is why these optionals occur. Uh, it found a nil while it was trying to unwrap an optional value. And so unwrapping a value means um, converting it from optional into a real value. So in that case, uh, it better not have a nil. It, if I just do this, this says, uh, I know there's a real value in here, so go ahead and convert it. This is forcing it into an integer. But I know it ahead of time that my temp has a real value in there. But in this case, it doesn't, right? I have a string. So I'm telling the program to override all of these problems, and it gets a crash. So that leads us to this concept uh, of unwrapping variables. They have, they have this thing called an if let, if let statement, which is wacky beyond belief as far as I'm concerned. But it, it's trying to help you to unwrap of a optional value. And so you say if let um, int of temp let's stop the <coughs> Plus. Nah. Uh, if that's true then that means that, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, call, let's see, now, now I'm confused a second. So we'll do something like uh, if let i equals this, we're going to try, this is like a try catch statement almost. Uh, we're going to try to do this conversion. Um, and if that conversion works, then I, I know that I have a good value in there. So i is going to have an integer. So I can set my return int to that value. Otherwise, oops. Otherwise, I need to kind of have an else statement here. Um, otherwise, my 
Let's see. I'm going to set it to zero instead. Let's see, that's not quite right yet. Yeah. For some reason, my file, my programs, it just all out of the blue is raining in like a text file. No color. Any explanation? Okay, let me look. Start recording again. Okay, so let's go through this again. Uh, this this will crash if I don't know for sure that this value I'm trying to convert has a real number in it. So if it has a string like like the word the in it, this is going to crash because it couldn't convert anything. It returns nil on a conversion. Uh, and so Swift has this concept of an if let statement where we temporarily assign a value from converting that string and that string then is compared if it's if it's a good value then it it's like running the the true statement of an if statement here I can do something with that value now if it's not that means it was a nil and I, I do something on that case. So I have two cases that I can deal with here. Uh, so in the case of a nil, I want my little function to set it to become a zero. Otherwise, I'm going to take whatever value you use to convert it. So, pardon me? No, it's for anything, any optional value. Well, I just tracked with my name and then it's zero. Yes. Because because of this statement, I'm I, if it's if this is a string like like your name, this is going to fail, and it's going to go to the else statement and say set my return to a zero. So I'm defaulting whatever they type to a zero to start with. That's right, but okay. you can't guarantee what a user types. <coughs> Dave is going to try both ways. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so this is how, this is called, this is called <coughs> unwrapping an optional value. All right. It's using this if let. Unwrapping a value. And this is a shortcut for unwrapping the value. Uh, but you can only use that if you know for sure that it's not going to crash that you know that doesn't have a nil in it, then you're okay. So when you're not de dealing with user input. Right. All right, so now when I type in a number, I get the number, I type in anything that's not a number, I get a zero, which is a lot like doing a gets with a, a dot two i on it, right? A 2i by default is returns you a zero. That's what you guys are used to. So this, this works pretty good. So now I can use my code uh, to make my box and my line that I had before. And put that code over here that I already wrote. And we'll call this size, box size. And let's print box size. And then I can call my make box, make, make box with this box size and the character, whatever I want, asterisk. trying computers until it works. <laughs> All right, so I have an error here. Missing argument label C in call. Oh. All right, so it'll run, enter the size. I want an eight-sided box, prints me an eight-sided box. Ta -da! All that to get a doggone integer from the user. It's 
just insane. Of course, in an iPhone app, you're not going to do that. You're going to get it from a, a element on the screen. It's going to be different, but um, it's a, even more code for that. <laughs> All right. Any questions on that? Wasn't that fun? Painful. The optional is something that I'm still having trouble with. It's a uh, to grasp myself. So don't feel bad if you don't quite understand this yet. You just have to think of it as this weird new type that can hold either a nil or whatever the value is. And I can create optionals by saying that I want it to be uh, a question mark. That forces it to be an optional here. Well, it should. Why is it not? Yeah. Never mind. I know you can do it. I just not got the syntax right here. Uh, so you can look at your, I think it has it in our little uh, cheat, sheet. Oh, cheat sheet here. Um, yeah, so right here it has the how to declare it as a an optional value. So it can either be a nil or a, some number. All right. So any questions on that? No? All right. Um, put that in the video. So I want you to take this concept now and write a get string that's going to return either a blank string or whatever they type in the in the uh, command line. Let's record it. All right. So let's uh, let's figure this guy out. Um, let's func get string. And I want it to return a string, and I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to get the data from the user. What happened? Whoa, something wrong here. All right, so this is going to read a string. Um, and again, these warnings don't really make sense until you uh, finish writing the code. So um, I guess the problem is that read line with an, uh, an exclamation point, what does that do to the read line? It makes it, it unwraps it, right? Unwraps it. it unwraps it. It makes it a non-optional because read line returns an optional value. This makes it not optional. And so temp is already a string. So in reality, what you could do is just say return temp. But we already decided that was bad because the user put it in. But in, a, in this oh, case, it's fine. the worst thing they can do is hit nothing. Well, I don't have a I don't have a value to read here. Let's read something in. Um, print, uh, enter your name, uh, and then say let name equals get string. So that will let me try it. So if I if I enter my name, that's going to work fine. If I run it again and enter nothing, uh, it's going to return nothing, which is a blank string, which is exactly what I wanted. 
so you don't need to do all of that other stuff uh, because of this here. This is, this is what I added here. So not real necessary to have a separate function like that. Um, but we could do the same thing for a double. Let's do a get double. Yeah, return a double. Uh, we're going to get something instead of, you know, obviously this is, we're going to convert this to a double instead. Hey yeah. So I don't know if it happens in Swift, but I know with Java, if you, when like doing the size of the triangle, if you input any decimal points, it crashes the program. On Java? Yeah. Yes, because you're, tr uh, well, we'll look at that today then. Um, so I was curious, is that the same case here? If I put a decimal in for the box size, say? Integers don't have decimals. So if you're looking for an integer. Yeah, so we'll, we'll try it. Um, I think, I'm hoping that int will stop at the period. Yeah, I thought it was going to drop off at the decimal. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm hoping. We'll see. So uh, we're going to try to unwrap it. We temporarily set it to a variable. Uh, if it works, we're going to keep that variable. Otherwise, we're going to return a 0, 0.0. So that looks right. So let's. Uh, Let's do a get double. Enter your weight. How about that? <laughs> and we're going to do get double. Okay, so 1.0 worked. Let's do um, uh, 0.2. That worked. What else do we need to test? A whole integer. Works. Um, and then garbage. Get zero, and then how about something like uh, with some other garbage at the end? So it does. So that was a failure because it the double conversion is not as smart as Ruby. It continues on with the entire thing and tries to convert this entire string into a double. And if, since it failed, our little return double gave me a zero instead. So my error, error correction, error testing is working, but that's, uh, that's a stupid user error. You know, what can you do? So for the, the triangle program, um, if they enter something invalid, instead of uh, set it to five or something so it still draws something or you want no to I would set it to zero okay. because that's that's what I expect on the Ruby side if I if you enter box size and I enter Dave that's going to return a zero because you do a, a two I on that and a zero uh, triangle is going to draw nothing that's what I would expect right. no, I have that but just, I just will screw around and just do a dashboard yeah on the Java side well we we'll play Ask that again in Java. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> All right. Wasn't that fun? I like Java. Dave doesn't like it. 
<laughs> well, it's better than Swift. It, it I have a new bad language, so this is good. It, it's interesting because uh, I usually like new languages, but this is kind of hokey. It seems weird to me. I I picked up Ruby and instantly liked it. It was so cool. But Ruby's good. This is not. Use for more things. Yeah. They used to have, they had a Ruby uh, interface that you could write Mac programs in Ruby, but they never continued it, and it's not uh, it's not, not really up to date anymore, so. That would be nice. That'd be fine, I think. All right, any questions on that? Um, we'll do classes tomorrow. We'll do the animal classes and stuff like we did in Java. All right. So now at least we have a working program. We can get our user input. We can get data. <laughs> All right, that's it.